I made a giant orange trash can. Did I mention it's also flexible and indestructible? This giant orange trash can is made out of TPU. TPU is one of my favorite 3D printing filaments. When you print with TPU, you're rarely disappointed. In fact, I love TPU so much, I've made two videos about flexible filaments, and you should go check those out if you haven't seen them. So I've been thinking about for a while, printing something big ever since I got my new rat rig printer. Um, I spent like 40, 50 hours putting this printed together. It has a big build plate. It's uh, about 16 inches squared. I wanna talk a little bit about what I had to do with my printer and my slicer and my filament to get this thing printed. So my plan was to print this trash can in TPU because I want the thing to be totally indestructible. And I knew that if I made it with pretty thick walls, it could be rigid enough, even though TPU is pretty flexible. And while TPU is very easy to print in terms of adhesion and warping, it does like to jam your hot end because it's so floppy. The extruder is basically pushing a wet noodle through the nozzle. One way to mitigate this is to print TPU in vase mode, or what's also known as spiralized outer contour mode in Cura. Instead of printing the model in discrete layers, it traces the outer perimeter of the object with a slowly increasing Z value, to print as a single continuous spiral. This avoids the usual starts and stops and retractions that cause TPU jams. And when you do a vase mode print in TPU, it also tends to be watertight, which is a nice benefit for a trash can. But there's one major downside, and that is that the entire surface of the print is going to be exactly one layer thick. And for the size of this trash can, a standard nozzle just won't be able to do it. Most printers come standard with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and it's generally not recommended to print with a line width greater than 1.5 times your nozzle diameter. So in this case, the thickest I could do this trash can would be a 0.6 millimeter wall, which really just is not big enough. Rather than changing my print strategy, I decided to change the nozzle, and I put on a huge one millimeter nozzle, which enabled me to print with a 1.6 millimeter wall thickness. First thing you need to do is heat up your extruder almost as hot as it can go, which in my case is 285 Celsius. Remove any filament if it's already loaded, and then use something pointy to pry the silicone heat sock off the hot end. For an E3D nozzle, you use a seven millimeter socket wrench to unscrew it from the hot end. I'm using a Fadus Rapido hot end, which requires an extra step with a 10 millimeter socket, but the process is otherwise the same. And make sure you give that nozzle a lot of time to cool down before you try to grab it with your fingers. It actually holds heat for a lot longer than you expect. When you're ready with the new nozzle, make sure your hot end is still at 285 Celsius and then screw it in. This is called hot tightening. One time I cold tightened a nozzle and it felt tight, but when the hot end heats up, the metal block that is screwed into expands more than the nozzle itself and it leaves a gap and I ended up having filament squirting out between all the threads. It was really obnoxious to clean up. On the plus side, when you tighten the nozzle at its max temperature, you don't have to tighten it very much because as it cools down, it's just gonna get tighter. And since you print most things below 285 Celsius, it doesn't have to be that tight at 285. With the new nozzle screwed in, I put the heat sock back on and prepared to recalculate the nozzle offset. You see, even though the thread nozzles fit, the actual height between the threads and the tip of the nozzle is usually different. The distance between the nozzle and the bed when the bed probe triggers has changed, which means if I were to try a print right now, the nozzle would either be too far from the bed or too close. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there explaining this process. Luckily with the new rat rig printer and using Clipper, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is type probe underscore calibrate into the console. It'll then move the nozzle to the middle of the print area and then move the nozzle down until the bed probe triggers. You can use the web UI to baby step the nozzle lower until it's about one paper thickness away from the bed. I just move it down in small increments, testing if the paper moves freely after each step. And when it finally has just a little bit of resistance, I stop it and save the nozzle position in the config and I'm ready to print. Oh, except that I leveled it for the smooth PEI side of my bed by accident. And if you have a double-sided build plate like me, you really should only ever print TPU on the textured side with glue stick. So I actually had to flip the build plate over and level it again. I can tell you firsthand, do not print TPU on smooth PEI unless you have to. And if you do, use a lot of glue stick or some other bed treatment. TPU sticks too well to smooth PEI and it will destroy your bed when you try to get it off. Don't ask me how I know. However, I found that standard Kids Elmer's glue stick is a great adhesive for TPU. Somehow it still stays stuck to the bed, but the glue completely prevents it from fusing to the bed. So when I print TPU, I always use the textured side and I always use a fresh layer of glue for it. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell that this thing is gonna use a lot of filament. I'm guessing I'm gonna need most of a spool, so I got on Amazon and ordered an 800 gram spool of Sane Smart TPU. Sane Smart had a really cool selection of these translucent colors, so that's what I went with. When my TPU arrived, I opened it to admire the color and then immediately put it in a dry box. 
One major downside of TPU is that it's really hygroscopic, sucking up moisture from the air and creating steam inside the nozzle when it prints, which causes all kinds of blobs and stringing. PLA, ABS, and especially PETG are also hygroscopic, but TPU can become unprintable in days instead of weeks or months that it takes the others to saturate with moisture. Once it was dry, I loaded it into the machine, which was surprisingly difficult because it has to go through this filament sensor, which I added to my printer, but it has quite a bit of resistance and pushing on TPU is like pushing on a wet noodle. I did eventually get it though and into the hot end, so now we're ready to print. I went to printables.com and found a vase model that I liked. Then I downloaded it and loaded it into Cura, which is my slicer. I have printer profiles set up for each of my printers here already, but I need to update the rat rig profile with the new 1.0 millimeter nozzle. The main print settings that I changed are to use a 1.6 millimeter line width, a half a millimeter layer height, print temperature of 225 Celsius, bed temperature of 50 Celsius, and a print speed of 30 millimeters per second. That line width will be the thickness of the trash can wall and is about 1.6 times my nozzle width. Sane Smart recommends printing this filament at about at 200 Celsius to 220 Celsius, but as you're about to see, the huge line shape means I'm gonna have pretty high flow rates, which usually benefits from keeping the extruder at or above the recommended max temperature. This is safe with regular filaments, but it's kind of a gamble with TPU since high temperatures also make it soften more, which increases the chance of it jamming. And although my new rat rig is a beast and can easily print other materials at 250 millimeters per second, I chose one eighth of that to only go at 30 millimeters per second because, well, I had to. One thing you learn when you use big nozzles is that flow rate starts to become your bottleneck instead of the actual physical speed of the machine. In this Fusion 360 demo, I'm showing on the right side what the line shape looks like for the big nozzle that I'm using compared to the left side, which shows a more standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and the line width and height that you would use for that. If you assume a print speed of 30 millimeters, then these rectangular prisms represent how much filament is extruded by each nozzle every second. The larger nozzle is doing at least six times as much filament per second as the smaller nozzle. So I go to slice it and it tells me nine and a half days to print and 25 kilograms of filament. Yeah, I did forget something. The spiralized outer contour setting, which is Cura's name for vase mode. But it is interesting to know that printing a solid block of TPU that big would require 30 of these spools and weigh 25 kilograms. But let's not try it. Let's just go to the right setting. With vase mode activated, it tells me it's about six hours and 680 grams of filament. Apparently this is gonna be a $25 trash can. Oh well, I'm already committed. Ship it. The printing actually went perfectly up until about 75% and then I got a series of jams. I have to say that my Big Tree Tech Smart Filament Sensor really saved my bacon on this print. Most filament sensors only detect the presence or absence of filament, such as when your spool runs out or the filament breaks mid-print, but it wouldn't detect a jam because the filament is still there, it's just not moving. However, this Smart Filament Sensor actually measures how much the filament is moving versus what the software thinks should be going in. If the filament is present but not spinning and the printer is printing, then it must be jammed. In both cases, the printer will simply park the extruder off to the side and wait for you to fix the problem, and then you can click a button in the UI to resume the print where it left off. So this print actually jammed three times within a few minutes, but then it spontaneously started working again and finished the print without a hitch. Granted, it's better than the print failing, but it doesn't resume perfectly, so it left a pretty big scar on the print at the 75% level. But it's better than nothing because the alternative is that the printer would simply finish the print, but not extruding anything. And that would be a pretty big waste of filament. Given that the first 75% printed cleanly and watertight, I'm not too worried about this. Also, the filament translucence and the surface pattern of the trash can does a good job of hiding those imperfections. If I was going to do this again, I'd probably lower the print speed even more to get a lower flow, and then I could also print at a lower temperature, which might have avoided the jamming. But overall, for printing this much TPU, you really shouldn't be surprised by jams. It finished after about seven hours, and I pulled it off the build plate and immediately fell in love with it. It came out exactly the way I hoped, and I confirmed that it weighed 680 grams, which is within a couple percent of what the slicer predicted. So there you have it, a giant TPU trash can. Hope you learned something about 3D printer nozzles and why you should love TPU as much as I do. Also, I wanted to try a new style of video that's focused on walking through interesting day-to-day -day projects I work on with less details and fewer diagrams so I can focus on getting content out faster. I still spent more time on this video than I'd hoped, but it's a step in the right direction. And in exchange, I'll be reading and responding to every comment you guys leave me, so leave a comment with any questions you have about what you saw or just let me know what you think of this style. Also, if you wanna buy any of this filament or a dryer box or anything, please use the affiliate links down below in the description. Using affiliate links really helps out us starving content creators. Oh yeah, and that like and subscribe thing, yeah, that helps out a lot too. Thanks for watching.